Hi everyone, welcome back to the podcast. Uh, if you're new to the to the channel, welcome. Uh, if you're a veteran of listening, uh, welcome back. And today we're going to talk about hip dysplasia, which uh, Hans definitely uh, knows about. <laughs> yeah, that's a big topic. So, I mean, I try to make it as complex and succinct as I can. Which succinct is not my middle name. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I, I always like to say 50 plus years of, of, of experience here talking. So again, I don't know who's listening. Sometimes some of you are new, like who is, who is this guy talking, right? Yeah, so, he's just yeah. a wackoid who speaks yeah. funny. Yeah. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> Dog poop picker upper. Yeah, there you go. Uh, well, hip dysplasia, right? Everybody's scared of it. Everybody worries about it. There's many theories on it. I, 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 I dealt and learned from some of the best people like Tina Levesque or Barber from Shiloh Shepherd. She was a really good, hip, uh, knowledgeable person. Fred Lanting. I, I, I know Fred and he knows me. I'm selling his books on hip dysplasia. Okay. You know, um, he, I, I don't necessarily agree with any of them hundred uh, percent. As I said, my Chinese proverb: ask thousand people and then make up your own mind. Right? Uh-huh. Uh, I hope everybody knows what hip dysplasia is. Right? The joints of the hip don't fit correctly in. Right? And there's two approaches: one is environmental, one is genetic. Right? And uh, <clears throat> Fred Lenting said the sentence which I memorized i think I, I hope if i can recreate it uh, g- hip dysplasia is a polygenetic problem this irregular pattern uh, which is genetically predisposed and environmentally induced mm, okay it's a mouthful but yeah yeah so the polygenetic means there's more than one gene involved okay, poly, in it yeah you know and uh I will say that all dogs have propensity or ability to develop or produce, not develop, to produce dogs with hip dysplasia, uh-huh. right? And then you have the dog, you know, people say, well, it's environmental, like slippery floor in a kennel, uh-huh. right? They put, people put puppies in a, uh-huh. a s- little baby swimming pool, you know, those old blue do yeah. the thingies, Slippery. right? And, and and the puppies are slipping, right? Uh-huh. And they say that causes bad hips, right? But you know what? You put puppies in that swimming pool on uh-huh. slippery floors and you have 10 puppies there and four of them is going to have bad hips and six of them not. Well, what uh-huh. was different? Nothing yeah. was different. Yeah. The genetics were different. Okay. So if any, so, so you know, some... So, it's gene- so if the genetics are more in that one puppy, because not all puppies have the exactly the same genetics, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so if, 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 if that one puppy has higher genetic propensity to develop bad hips, then genetically, I mean, environmentally induced yeah. will show it. Okay, right? but it didn't cause it. No. The, the pool didn't. No, because... You know. Yeah. Because you have puppies with, uh, I mean, some of them didn't have yeah. it, right? Yeah. So, so it's just, it's just, it, it what happened? It, it pushed the, the puppy, um, his hips over the hump because he has higher propensity to develop bad, bad hips, yeah. because the genetics or you know were there for a little bit for for the bad hips, right? Yeah. So, so it, it it gets it over the hump, the the slippery floor. Uh-huh. So you may say, you may say, well, let's not put them on slippery floor. You're not gonna have bad hips. Well, maybe you eliminate that particular <coughs> uh, environmental environmental situation for the dog, and and so okay, so they will not have bad hips. That doesn't mean the environment causes. You still have the genes there. Now, if you take that puppy which would develop bad hips, but it didn't develop them because it was not on slippery floor and breed it, guess what you get? You get a lot of bad hips, yeah. right? Yeah. So you would say, well, then stress crap out of the puppies as far as slippery floors goes and pick up only the one 
which ends up with good hips. And that would be one way to do it, but who who, who has the nerves to, to yeah. do that, right? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So so but but you know, you must not make excuses uh for bad hips by of environment. Okay, uh-huh. the environment uh <coughs> well is important, you know, it is important. And I will say in a second why is it important, okay? So 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 uh, but 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 always understand when you are a breeder that the genetics are of paramount importance right it's not the environment the environment is important for the buyer or the owner of the puppy especially if they don't want to breed they just want to have a nice dog who will not develop bad hips uh-huh. now okay keep the puppy f- uh, and you don't want to breed yeah right so so now keep that puppy away from slippery floors, right? Yeah. For example. I mean yep. there's other yep. things running up and down the stairs. One whatever. follows the other. There's an order of things a little bit, it kind of what you're saying. It can be. Right. It, it's not Right. It, right. So so <clears throat> and then and then you have um so so you have the so and then I said I'm gonna talk about it later. This is a point. Uh environment we're talking about natural environment and unnatural environment, right? Yeah. Natural means what would be in nature, in nature right? So if they say, well, not slippery swimming pool, baby swimming pool is not in nature, right? Yeah. yeah. So, okay, well, that's slightly unnatural, right? Slippery rocks and the... Yeah, yeah, the- whatever. It's, oh. it's, it's, but, right. but you may have other things which are much more important, and I want to talk about those, as far as environment goes, which you would not find in the nature, right? And one of them is nutrition, right? And uh, so what is the wolf? And people say, dog is not wolf. Yeah, it's the same species, you know? Yeah. So let's yeah. not get go there, right? Yeah. You can always learn from wolf. Yeah. So what is the wolf eating? Is he eating Purina or... You know, yeah. granul- science little, diet, <laughs> little balls of granulated dog food. Yeah, I love the names of these dog foods too. Like science diet, like it's like yeah, purina. science that purina, well, science like, diet purina. It's like know, marketing, taste of the wild. I know. <laughs> you know. So yeah. Okay, look. Well, so so I'm gonna talk a little bit about dog food right yeah. now. So what is the um, what is what are the companies which are um, selling the dog food what are they um what are they trying to do right they're trying to mimic meat mm-hmm. right you cannot get better than meat no, that's it it's like water <laughs> yeah it's, not better. it's yeah. water yeah you can't you just cannot get any better than breed he says people say well i feed the granulate dog food because i want them to have balanced diet i said balance like what like meat so you feed meat right mm-hmm. i remember i was in tina's and uh she would she would have a client who says, well, I want to feed granulate dog food because it's better for the dog, right? And and she would say, okay, I'll tell you, do this. And we actually, she, we did it together just for a heck of it, right? She would say, she we would put a dog food uh-huh. on a dish uh-huh. and a piece of meat on a dish and put it outside. Oh, I see. And uh, see what happens, right? Mm-hmm. And... Uh, we went to it about a week later, and you could see the uh, the granulate dog food is exactly the same, right? No change, yeah. No change, right? And the and the meat was full of maggots and mm-hmm. moldy and you know mm-hmm. gooey, running, yep. gross, right? Yep. And, and and people would say, "Well, you see, that's why you don't want to feed meat." I said, "No, that's why you don't you... want to feed the granulate dog food because not even maggots want to eat it, yeah. and you want to feed it to your dog." I think I may have said that story here before. When I before I stopped feeding a granulate dog food, I had a bag, about three quarter bag left, and I dumped it by the orange tree because yeah. I thought, well, it's a meat kind of thing. It will yeah, fertilize. Yeah. That tree died. Three years it took it to get smaller and smaller, and uh-huh. you know that it was just one leaf. It should have been died. I still I still have it in my backyard. I should take a picture of it. Yeah, you should. You know. And so, so what happens is, so, 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 so I say feed meat because it's the most balanced food. 
and has the enzymes where the granulated dog food doesn't have the enzymes yeah. because otherwise it would get full of mold and maggots, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, we recorded. But, full the, but the maggots, they know what to, what's yeah. good, right? Yeah. yeah. We recorded actually a podcast before on that. We just haven't published that. All Maybe, right. I don't well, know it you're doesn't, doesn't I'm hurt just to saying, repeat it. Yeah, right? it's so good. Yeah. So, so yeah. now you have these companies, number one, and going back to hips, okay, and, yeah. and this, this this enzyme stuff applies to other, and that's the other podcast, yeah, right? Yeah. But I'll go back to hips with this, right? Yeah. So now you have like these high level, what I call hot dog foods. I'm not going to say any brands right here because I don't want to, you know, yeah. get canceled. Yeah. <laughs> they have shiny bags and. Yeah. Trout jumping. Oh yeah, you know, and grizzly bear watching it in fr from a you know. Yeah, the wolf is running through the yeah, woods. Yeah, the mountains <laughs> in back and lush, now luscious meadows. Yeah. All natural, organic type sure. shit, right? Yeah. And they even say that it's all natural yeah. and Russian yeah. and, and, and 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 you know whatever. But what happens is so they they pack this type of food with so much nutrition. It's, that's why I call it hot. Hot means there's a lot of nutrition, mm -hmm. just really concentrated. Mm -hmm. So that the puppies, they grow really fast mm -hmm. in, on that, mm -hmm. right? The deficiency of the enzymes is not showing up yet because the puppies have enough enzymes of their own. And uh, I suspect, and so they're using the, the, the enzymes of their own to digest that food, right? Mm -hmm. And I suspect that because they're redirecting the enzymes of on the dog food, mm -hmm. it, they take it from somewhere, and part of it may be the hips. That's mm -hmm. one of the things, okay. you know. The other thing is because the, 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 there is so much nutrition, the food is so hot, that the uh, um, dog is growing too fast, right? And now, <clears throat> what's growing fast? The bones, right? Also, yeah. right? And that's where the hip problems are mm -hmm. right so 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 you 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 know the 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 bones are um composed of proteins and many different minerals mm -hmm. mainly calcium phosphorus and then magnesium manganese and a bunch of other minerals right and and what's the what's the uh, fact is that the bone or the body of the dog or human yeah. Uh, is able to absorb these minerals at a different rate, mm -hmm. right? And that rate is predetermined by what it was for millions of years since dog canines exist, mm -hmm. right? Or any other breed, okay, for that matter, yeah. right? Gi giraffe doesn't have bad hips, right? Yeah, yeah. Or wolf, yeah. right? And so, so what happens is the... Um, the uh, um, if you if the dog is growing too fast, yeah, calcium is easier to absorb. Then it's phosphorus, then it's manganese. You know, so so in order to create certain mineral, which you know, mineral is a conglomerate or composite of different elements. Mm -hmm. So magnesium, phosphorus, calcium is not really mineral; <coughs> they are elements, mm -hmm. right? Mineral is a composition of CaCO2, you know, it's like mm. that would Multiple. be the uh, uh, like a uh, limestone, right, or whatever. Multiple. Right? Yeah. So, mm. so, and and these minerals, I mean, these elements should be deposited into the bones and create minerals, right, and composition of the bone. And and as I said, the the speed with which they the body is able to do <coughs> it varies depending what mineral they deal with, mm -hmm. and there's. Some chemists can probably explain why, but that's beyond the scope of this, right? Just take my word for it. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. And now if you feed hot dog food, which is overabundance of all the elements yeah. or minerals, as Americans like to say, yeah. uh, the body is depositing calcium, calcium, calcium. I need some manganese, but I don't have it. I still build it up. Or I need some phosphorus. Well, I still put calcium. Calcium is soft. It doesn't create the minerals, the, the composites of uh -huh. the elements. It, the body doesn't need to cer have certain time uh -huh. to do that. Mm -hmm. Now, if the dog is growing too fast, you are not giving the dog 
Mark's body is a chance to build the murals as they're supposed to be, mm-hmm. right? So like in wild, the, the dog will, or the wolf or dog or whatever canine, will kill a deer or rabbit or mouse or frog or whatever, eat it, and then it's going to not eat for a while, and, and it goes back and forth. And, and sometimes the, 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 the food was good for this type of yeah. nutrition, and, and, and when he ate that fish, it was for that nutrition. Yeah. And, and, and it, it takes slowly uh, to build yeah. the composition of the bone. Where if you feed hot dog food, you get all the nutrition there all the time at any time. Okay. And so the bone grows really fast. Yeah. And fa- but, but, but because the ability of the body to utilize these, yeah. these, these minerals uh, or elements, yeah. right, uh, it, it, it varies, you are not giving the body of the dog the time, time. to build strong bone. And I've mentioned it several times. I go, I love to hike in a desert, right? Or in the mountains, whatever. Yeah. I just like to, you know, and I like to go in the woods and stuff or in the wild and take a dog or two and just just, just bushwhack and go and whatever. Mm. And sometimes I find a dead animal, uh-huh. right? A coyote, for example. Yeah. Or I drive on a highway, I see dead coyote got killed over there. So I'd make a mental note of it yeah. and I stop by like a two weeks later or a month we, later we compl- and there's just a skeleton right yeah. left because everything ate it and so I look at their hips uh-huh. I just as a matter of fact I had a collection of bones at home my, my girlfriend threw it away <laughs> you know <laughs> that coyotes, I, w- I wonder right? why <laughs> <laughs> and pelvis of a cow and deer and all yeah. that with the femur yeah but you wanted to see this yeah. yourself. And, and you know, I noticed two things, right? Number one thing I noticed that the bones are hard as a marble. Mm-hmm. They're so tough. They're shiny. It's deer. Mm-hmm. Did you ever kill a deer and broke the bone? It's like, it, it's just no. hard. Okay. Right? And, 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 and why? Because the minerals had plenty of time to, to build the bone. Yeah. Makes right? Makes sense. You know, logical. Yeah, it's logical. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I don't have a scientific mm-hmm. study on it, but yeah. I just go on strictly logic, right? And you collected these bones. You looked at them too. Yeah. 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 And you know, the the bone and femur of a coyote they fit in nicely. You know, mm-hmm. just perfect, man. Yeah. yeah. I wish I would have those bones. Some dogs, ate, my dogs ate some of them. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Yeah. Anyway, you know, and then you know, you see. You see dead dogs, so I go there and pick up, and yeah, the bones are soft. You can poke in it with knife, uh-huh. and it goes right in. Even uh-huh. even fresh bones or cow bones, dead cow in, on the ranch somewhere, uh-huh. uh, bones are soft. Why? Because yeah. they want them to the cow to grow fast, so they can build up as much beef as possible. Mm-hmm. And my favorite example is nursery, right? You know, with a tree, I told yeah, you, yeah, yeah. right? So what's going on? Nursery, what's their business? To so sell big trees, right? Bigger yeah, yeah. tree, more money. Yeah. So you want the tree to grow as fast as possible. So it's cost efficient to spend a little money on a fertilizer so the tree grows fast. It's yeah. like feeding the hot dog food, right? Yeah. And then the tree is growing so fast that the, the trunk is so soft, it cannot support the crown of the tree. Yeah. So it starts bending over, even breaks. Yeah. So they put a stake next to it, tied to that stake. So it would, you know, you go to nursery, every yep. damn tree has a stake next yeah. to it, right? Because yep. that. Yep. And the fertilizer is akin to um, feeding hot food, mm-hmm. right? Full of vitamins. Now you go in the woods where these trees would be growing, yeah. and there's no stakes. Yeah. There's no poles next to it and elastic yeah. tied to it so, you know, the tree can stand up. Yeah. Why? Because it's growing naturally from whatever is in that soil and the seed will grow only where it's good soil yeah. and, and, and moisture. And then it just deals with it. And in for millions and gazillions of years, it, yeah. it, it, it grows like that. Yeah. And it's predisposed to grow like that. Yeah. Right? And same thing with the dogs. They're predisposed to grow in certain speed. So if you're making dog to grow too fast, it's trouble. The, 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 you, you are asking for trouble with ba- hips and elbows, yeah. right? Because they don't have time to, to, to develop. Yeah. Right? That's one thing. Mm-hmm. That's, the, that's the environmental thing, right? That's the over the top, what I said, you know, yeah. over 
you know, over what's normal, you yeah. know. Yeah. Like running up and down stairs, that's not normal. That's normal. Yeah, whatever, dog, run up and down the mountains. What's the difference? Yeah. Right? Yeah. They put the foot like this or like that. People say, nah, doesn't matter. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, what? I, I was when I was working Kimberton Kennels and all that, they had wolves there, right? So I started reading on wolves and I've, I read this somewhere. And man, I would really find, and it was a book, it was before internet. And I would like to find where I read it so I can document it a little better. But the gist of the thing was that uh, all canines have a ability to produce bad hips, uh-huh. right? And uh, in wild, they don't have bad hips. How come? Yeah. Right? So you take a wolf and... Um, Put him in captivity and breed him, uh-huh. and uh, he will have perfect hips. And then you take those puppies, and they still will have perfect hips. And in the third generation, they start having bad hips, uh-huh. right? In other words, what happened was, in nature, that's my theory again, yeah. right? In nature, the wolf, in order to be bred, has to be in perfect shape and stamina and speed and yeah. strength and everything, right? Yeah, yeah. Everything got to be perfect. <clears throat> Only the strongest ones to breed. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> that's the one which which has no pro- uh, uh, no signs of hip dysplasia, which are there. But 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 it's it's, it's they, he has no signs of it. Mm. That's why he is the strongest. Yeah. While, and and there's something, and I don't know what it is, but maybe the muscle is attached a little different place and stuff, which makes the wolf, which is strong to run fat, I mean, which has the, the, the genes um, on the bottom of the deck, and I'm going to talk about that. Um, he's going to, he he, he, he he will have the... the ability to procreate, right? Mm-hmm. Because he's the strongest, mm-hmm. right? Where the dog or wolf, which is not the strongest, in wild, in nature, yeah. maybe the muscle is attached a little bit somewhere else, or there is sometimes some imperfection, yeah. which we don't even know what it is. I wish I would know what it is. Yeah. But but it is there, and so that wolf will not procreate because mm-hmm. he's slightly slower, slightly mm-hmm. less strong, to fight the other wolf, mm-hmm. right? So he will not procreate, and that keeps the, that's a natural selection which will keep the Genetic. the hips good, yeah, right. Yeah. But I, I mentioned a deck of deck of cards. Fred Lanting came up with this analogy which I really love, and it, it's simplistic. And I don't want anybody saying you know to me that that's not how it works. But believe me, in principle, it works that way. Okay. So let's say let's say. You have two decks of cards, fifty-two cards, or how many is there, right? Mm. And uh, and the and and they represent the genes, and the the genes which would be representing bad hip dysplasia. Let's pick up just three genes, mm-hmm. right? Let's say there's more, but let's say three cards. Two. So let's yeah. say King of Hearts, J and Q, you know, Hearts are the bad genes, mm-hmm. right? And now you have two decks. One is male and one is female. And you 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 shuffle the decks. Yeah. And uh, and 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 when you flip the top card, you have King of Hearts on 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 the father side, and King of Hearts on the mother side. Yeah. Now you will have bad. <coughs> now, now you will get hip dysplasia, especially if there is what do you call it, Jack and Queen. Yeah. Below it also. Now you have a bad hips, mm-hmm. right? Now if you shuffle the deck and the, the 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 genes are on the bottom, lower down on the bottom they are, the less likely the dog is gonna have bad hips, mm-hmm. right? So if you look at wolf, they keep shuffling it, and 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 how do you how do you how do you how do you put the the genes down by selective breeding, yeah. right? Okay, and 
and and so if you selectively breed dogs with uh, good hips and all that, yeah. you're pushing the genes down to the bottom of the deck. Yeah. Right. And 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 so um, so that's happening in nature naturally. Yeah. Right. But if we don't do that, and 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 we don't even know how to do that, and it, and it's true about wolves the three generation thing mm -hmm. because it takes about three generations when the dog doesn't have to survive and all that you just put male and female wolf somewhere in the cage mm -hmm. right without i see so you know humans once humans yeah once the humans step in you know yeah. you start yeah. having after three generations bad hips and wolves greyhounds same thing uh -huh. who do they breed they breed greyhounds which win yeah why do they win because their hips are just perfect yeah uh, husky sled dogs yeah you know uh, same thing mm -hmm. right so 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 what what wins in nature or in races and all that stuff that's what uh, uh will I see. Yeah. promote environmentally good uh -huh. hips because pushes the genetics yeah down to the bottom of the deck so you have human uh, selection and you have in a way, nature's selection, right? right. But either way, it's well. You gotta go always back to nature, yeah. right? And you, 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 if you, if you're making selection, you gotta try to mimic the nature. Yeah, nature. Yeah. Now, in this particular instance, like in German Shepherds or any other breed, really, people think German Shepherd has the worst hips. It's not true. Okay, if you look at statistics, German Shepherd about thirty six. Okay, so the but the reason why people talk about German Shepherds having bad it's hips is because. Because Cornell University used to run a study oh, on bad hips, and okay. they used German Shepherds. So basically, from then on, all the studies on uh, hip dysplasia on German Shepherds were done. I mean, on hip dysplasia were done with German Shepherds. So yeah. now people think all oh, only German Shepherds have bad hips. Okay. No, it, no, it's uh, just... you know, and uh, that's not how it works. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. so the German Shepherds uh, don't have the worst hips, right? Okay. You know. So anyway. Another thing is uh, when you, you know, me and Tina, we came up with this program, how to apply all this, what I just said, because you can, we still don't really know, you know, within those three generations, which causes those bad hips. People look at x-rays, but it's too late. Yeah. By the time dog has bad hips, eh, you already missed two generations to eliminate that, yeah. right? Or push the genes down on the bottom of the deck. Yeah. So, so what... Um, what we develop with Tina, mainly Tina had a lot of to it. We call it LMX program, which means litter mate X rate. Litter. Lit litter. Yeah, litter. Yeah. Litter mate X rate. X rate. X rate. Oh, X rate. Okay. Yeah, X rate. You know, X -ray. like the machine. You, when you break an arm. The, yeah, X rate. Okay. Yeah. So, and litter mate, like okay. a like a brother and sister mates, yeah. right? Okay. And uh, and so so that program works really well, except it's hard to do it. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what that program is. You 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 when you want to breed two dogs, mm -hmm. okay. Um, you look at their litter mates. Okay. So imagine you have a ten puppies, uh -huh. and they're all dysplastic except one. Okay. Right. And you take that one puppy, which is not dysplastic, and breed it to a female or the other sex, uh -huh. uh, which has the same makeup. Uh -huh. Ten puppies were his litter mates, or you know, he was out of ten puppies, or she was out of ten puppies. They were all dysplastic in one. So now you have dogs which are out of ten puppies, nine dysplastic, and you breed those. What do you think you're gonna get? Uh -huh. You get shitload of bad hips. Yeah. Yep. Even so, the dogs you're breeding may have perfect hips. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, so in order to do that, you gotta look at the litter mates of the dogs you 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 breed. Okay. And that's hard to do, you know, but you gotta try to follow that pattern, mm -hmm. right? And 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 and. So let's say now you have a 10 puppies, only one has a bad hip. That's good. Even two mm -hmm. who have bad hips, if the rest have good hips, right? Mm -hmm. You know, because 
it's it's hard to have a ten puppies and they all have perfect hips. But if you have the yeah, you have a something, yeah, yeah. right? Now this is not it yet. This is not the end of it. If you wanna do this program, you gotta do it for at least three generations. Mm -hmm. That's hard. You gotta have so many dogs and X rate, and then you are in third or fourth generation, at least three or preferably five, mm -hmm. right? So we always call it five LMX. That means five generations later made X rate, mm -hmm. right? And if you have five generations and none of the litter mates had bad hips or very small percentage, you will probably produce again, you know, but it's hard to do that involves hundreds of puppies. And then you are in, in third or fourth generation, suddenly you get a bunch of bad hips and you can start all over again. Mm -hmm. It's a nightmare, okay. right? But, but that's explains how these hips work, right? Mm -hmm. The genetics. So, so you, you need to, um, you need to always apply it, mm -hmm. right? Even so, you cannot apply that program 100%. You always should look at the litter mates of the dog, at least of the dogs who, breed, who you breed. And if you keep doing it, and everybody would keep doing it, eventually mm -hmm. there will be three, five generations of these dogs, right? Mm -hmm. But the problem is people mm -hmm. don't do it, so now you breed to the dog which you want to breed to, and suddenly he doesn't have good LMX number yeah. and you're starting all over his screwing mm -hmm. up you know yeah. so so but 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 that's and i and, and we presented it to uh fred lanting you know with tina mm -hmm. and fred lanting says yeah that's that's a good way to do it yeah. you know but how do it it's it's very difficult then you have the pen hip you know where they you know x-ray dog specific ways but you know i don't know i think it's that you know, maybe that's a good way to do it. Fred Lanting is all about pen hip. You can look up how pen hip is done. Okay. Pen hip is done. You, you lay the puppy on the back and put like a rolled uh, paper towel roll and, 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 and push the knees together behind the roll. Uh -huh. And it kind of pulls the hips out of the socket. And you look at young puppy like eight weeks old or whatever, or 16 weeks old, and you can tell you know, um, how far the hips pop out. And that may be one of those characteristics which Wolf um, mm -hmm. may make him stronger because the hips didn't pop. You, mm -hmm. you measure the distance between mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the pelvis and the, the femoral head, uh -huh. you know. Yeah, so it's pretty tedious. Well, to pencil, pen hip means Pennsylvania, University of Pennsylvania. Is that where the study? Yeah, and that's where the principle came from. Okay. And um, and that's probably one way, good way to do it. But I think it's, I don't like it. I don't know why. It, it just mm -hmm. rubs me the wrong way to pop puppies' hips yeah. out of the socket, right? Yeah. Forcefully, you know. Yeah. And they said, oh, it won't hurt them. Well, okay, if you say so. But I don't, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. You know, maybe it would be a good way to go. I don't know. I guess if they don't pop out, they don't pop out. So that's good, right? Yeah. But if they do. But if they do, you're harming the puppy. Yeah. You know, maybe, yeah. maybe because you're stretching the ligaments. Yeah, you know. So, so we have the nutrition, we have the genetics. So, uh, and also, oh, going back to nutrition, I, I forgot. So, uh, I mean, I kind of touched on it, but you know, that's why I'm against the, the, the granulated dog food, and I prefer meat, which it's natural. Yeah. And and if you really want to be good <laughs> about it, uh, you you should feed a variety of different meats. Mm -hmm. If you can get beef heart. Mm -hmm. You know, be careful with liver, it gives dogs diarrhea. Area. Yeah. You can give a little bit, yeah. you know, like a teaspoon, maybe yeah. no more. Yeah. And, uh, you know, chicken, I, I feed whole chicken bones and everything. Yeah. Oh, you feed dogs and chicken bones. Well, yeah, don't, we feed, do. don't feed uh, just the bones themselves. Yeah. But as long as the bone is inside of the meat, yeah. the dog will crush it and all that. And since the bone is surrounded by the raw meat of the chicken thigh, yeah. Yeah. It will not harm the dog. Yeah. We have a video. I mean, Hans has a video on this, by the way, if you're how listening to transfer the dogs to a, a yeah, a, puppies, how to pup feed puppies, uh, raw, raw puppies. Yeah, That's yeah, a good one. A yeah. Good video. Yeah. 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 Uh, check that out at uh, Alpine Canine Real. Um, Dot com, so. right, I don't know if I'm forgetting something about the hips. No. You know? I'm, sure, I'm sure there's, but I mean, I think you touched well, I wanna, on the I wanna just want to touch on the yeah. main things, yeah. you know, which everybody yeah. should worry about. Yeah. Yeah. You know, 
So if you're buying a dog, you know, ask the breeder, hey, what about the litter mates? What kind of hips they have? Oh, I don't know. Okay. Did you look into it? No, I didn't know I should. Okay. Eh, maybe you, doesn't mean you shouldn't buy the dog, but you do that research. Yeah. At least you you're, you're try to empower yeah, and, people and, right now to right, ask the right questions right. now. Look, and, and, but the problem with that is like, how do you get the data, right? Yeah. So, so what happens is you, you may them? go to like OFA or you may go to pedigree database and people put their yeah. hips there. But, okay. you know, the problem is people who have dog with bad hips, they don't publish it. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So now, now you don't know, it? right? So the only yeah. people who publish it are the pissed off customers. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. dog, look, and I put him at Fifi from XYZ had bad hips, but the breeder who owes kennel XYZ is not going to publish it. So you try to look for a breeder, hopefully, that would in Europe, do it. Yeah. In Europe, in some countries, yeah. they don't tell you what the hips are until they ship it to for evaluation. So they x-ray the dog, and you never see the x-rays until the evaluation come in. So you cannot say, I don't want uh -huh. uh, this shit hips being publicized oh, or I even see. evaluated because you're paying for the evaluation, <clears throat> right? Oh, I see. So why do you spend money when the hips are shit? Yeah. No, you pay first, then they x-ray the dog, and then they send it in. And a few weeks later, you get back the results. And you don't know what the heck they're going to be. So you're And that way it's published good and bad. Okay, but I here see. in the United States... I see what you mean, yeah. You know, I but see. here in the United States... They don't publish... People, them. you just x-ray the dog, and you look at it and say, fuck that. Yeah. I'm not sending, spending money on this. I know it's this plastic. Yeah. I don't want to have it published. It gives me bad name and all. Well, I mean, if you're breeding bad hips. But that's it's a human you know, psychology. That's how it is. There's a guy, I mean, we're not going to name names. I remember just going about this, that he, he he's actually, um, he's got, the dog has bad elbows, um, and he's putting it out there as a healthy dog, good-looking, good-looking shepherd, but it's produced bad hips. Some guy out there, I don't yeah, know yeah, what to go into, but yeah, you talked about His name started with R. Okay. <laughs> it's up to you if you want. But yeah, um, and uh, so yeah. And his last name started with L. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to reveal what you guys can do to research. As far yeah. as I but, um, Yeah, it's, a, it's not an easy thing for some. I mean, maybe this is a little bit more advanced for some people, but it's well, never. But it is what it is. It is what it it's is. It's not a simple problem. Yeah. You know, I mean, OFA is x-raying. People start x-raying dogs from 60s, mm. and we still have shit hips. Yeah. You know, so x-raying by itself doesn't help you any. Doesn't help you out. Yeah. Right? It's too too late. It's too, but well, no, it's too simplistic. Too late, yeah. It's just not that. you. And Germans have this ZVV, which is not the ZVV title type thing, but yeah. it's Zucht something, something in German, mm -hmm. you know, and they give numbers. And those numbers are... Um, describing the litter mates and stuff similar okay. to the litter mates x-ray you know okay. it's a good system uh -huh. um but we, here we just have the ofa and the ofa is uh just uh you know publishing whatever you send them in yeah but as i said people don't send in the bad hips yeah right yeah you know well, so it comes down to honesty of how you run your business it's not even yeah it's not even about honesty i don't know well, what it is you know who won't, you know you you won't, yeah i mean you got force sometimes people to do things and as i said that's why in europe yeah. uh, uh in some countries they 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 used to, at least i don't know if it's still that way but but of course if you know the vet he still shows you the x-rays right yeah so you know but 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 if it's then he may lose the ability to submit the x-rays to the registry right uh -huh. so they're kind of careful but if it's your buddy <laughs> Who knows, right? Somewhere yeah. in the back in dark room. Yeah. You yeah. look at the X ray film or the digital yeah. on the screen. Who knows, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, so that's it. And then, of course, we have the issue about hips uh, at what age to breed, uh, to X ray the mm -hmm. dogs, right? In Europe, in Czech, for example, most of it is 13 months. Okay. The reason for that is that you are training dog for competition or for something you want to know as soon as possible. Uh -huh. So, between 13 months and up, the hips still can get worse or better sometimes. Uh -huh. um, and uh, um, but not much. Okay. Right. So by that that age. Right now, now in some countries, uh, 
you x-ray dogs at two years, like in the United States. I think Switzerland was five years. Uh -huh. I don't know what it is now, you uh -huh. know, but it was like five years. You x-ray the dog with five years. Uh -huh. That's too late because by then the dogs are titled and trained and, yeah. you know. They couldn't even be bred by then. Yeah, well, they're bred. Yeah, oh, of yeah. course. Yeah. Which so, they... But then again, if they have good hips at five years, they're, that's good. Yeah. You see, that's the re reasoning there. Uh, in Sweden, I've heard some Swedish breeder told me they x-ray them, I think, at two and then at four or five again. Uh -huh. Okay. So they do the preliminary kind of thing. Interesting. Right? To see, okay, we breed that. But then... And they publish it. So, you know, you have a puppy which at two years had great hips and five years he was severely dysplastic. Mm -hmm. And maybe you shouldn't breed your puppy, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. so, so, so things like that, you know, and there's, there's all sorts of tricks and all that. But mainly at this point, you know, I want people to understand the relationship uh, between genetics and the nutrition, okay. you know, and how to, you know, how to evolve. Evaluate the hips. Another thing is, guys, I hate to say it, but most vets, they have no idea how to x-ray the dog. Mm -hmm. Dog is all over. You go on my website, I have three websites. So the, you go on the Alpine Canine, and there is a yellow button. It says health and other whatever. It's The button is yellow. You click on that, and it takes you to a page of different issues, and one of them is hips. Mm -hmm. And if you go there, it'll show you, you can maybe impose that Alpha K9 hips yeah. yellow button, right? Okay. And, uh, yeah. and uh, Alpine and uh, um, the main thing is everything got to be parallel, right? So you have the spine and the femurs on both sides got to be parallel and perpendicular. In other words, the pelvis has to be under 90 degrees to the spine uh -huh. and to the legs, to the femurs, yeah. right? And each side, if you if you would put a mirror right where the spine is and half, exactly half in between the legs of the dog, mm -hmm. because he's laying on the back, right? The both sides got to be total perfect mirror image. Mm -hmm. Right? That's and another like, thing. Eh. Yeah. yeah. No, but it cannot be tilted. Uh -huh. And you can tell it's tilted because the pelvis has these holes in it. Mm -hmm. And if the holes are different size of shape, it's that's tilted. the perspective is different. Yeah. So that, that tells you that uh, the dog the is not laying straight, yeah. uh, and, uh, you know. So they're not get, getting a correct image then. Right. They're yeah. not getting correct image. Uh, and... Uh, and, and so if, if you x-ray the dog and the vet shows you, you know, something crooked, just don't do it again. Yeah. You know, you're paying for good stuff, not for bad stuff. Yeah, take a good image. Right. And 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 the the third thing, you know, so so anyway, let me reemphasize, you gotta have and you gotta pay <clears throat> care to the details. So when you see these holes in pelvis and one it's like a real round and the other one is more oval. Uh, then the dog was laying a little bit on one side or the other, right? Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> and so the, the they gotta be same size, same size. Imagine you take a circle yeah. and when you take a perspective vertically on it, it's gonna be circle. Circle, yeah. Whenever you tilt the circle, it's gonna be oval, right? Yeah. Yep. Right. So so <coughs> so you don't wanna see, you you wanna see both exactly same size and shape, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And the third thing, which is extremely important, is you want to always the x-ray uh, see the kneecaps, mm -hmm. okay? The kneecaps got to be on the x-ray right in the middle of the knee like a bullseye, uh -huh. right? If it's on one side of the, it's like a target. Uh -huh. And if that bullseye is a little bit too much to the right or to the left, that's mean the, the 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 vet when he was pushing the legs down, torque the uh -huh. the bones right okay. the legs outward usually uh -huh. or inward inward makes the dog's hips look better, outward makes them look worse. Okay. Because when you torque it out, that that you know so if I torque it right so the yeah. the hip is coming out of the socket right yeah so it looks worse. 
But really, this is normal position. Mm -hmm. So you may make look good hips look like crap, uh-huh. right? Or you may look crappy hips look, look good. good if you torque it inward. Okay, got right? it. Yeah. Right. So so you want to know the truth. Yeah. So you always look at the kneecap, mm-hmm. right? And the kneecap gotta be like like a, you know the store target has yeah. that, that uh-huh. you know. Yeah. So you want to see that right in the middle. Okay. You know, but. It's a short page on my website, alpineK9.com, health or something. It's a yellow button. Mm-hmm, yeah. Click on that and then you go to hips and it'll tell you it's one page. It's, okay. it's and pictures and examples and all that. So what I'm saying is when you're getting x-ray the dog, educate mm-hmm. yourself mm-hmm. how the good hips supposed to look like. Okay. And if it doesn't fit the description how the hips should look like after the vet hands you the picture take the music. just say hey man can we do better yeah. be nice you know because yeah. vets are touchy about that crap yeah and if they don't want to do it well hey go away go somewhere else yeah you know yeah and you know what i tell the the the, the vets up front you know i say hey I, i'm i'm stickler i want this to be perfect if it's not perfect uh we gotta do it again in europe yeah. They have this thing which they call cradle, which looks like a cradle. It's kind of V-shaped contraption. Oh, they put the dog. And they put the dog on it so it doesn't, oh, okay. you know, tilt. You know, that's they don't do it here for some reason, or I've not seen it anywhere. Maybe make, somebody does it. But make their jobs it. easier. I mean, not just yeah, easier, yeah. but it would get a better image. And then another thing is, if you go there, they want to put the dog under anesthesia, right? Uh huh. Because they're they don't want to handle the dog and 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 they don't have to put it under anesthesia. I don't like to, them to put it under anesthesia. I want to see the dog in natural state, yeah. because if the dog is under anesthesia, it relaxes and everything falls apart. Mm-hmm. You know, literally apart, like away, like yeah. right? Yeah. And and so so what happens is uh, I want to see the dog when it has normal tension and all that when it's normal, natural. Maybe I'm wrong. And the dog could. That's what happens when the dog is not under anesthesia or is only under partial anesthesia, uh-huh. you know. In the OFA, when you send the dog for certification there, they allow for it. There's, there's a fear, was the dog anesthetized or not? And the vets, some vets will tell you it has to be anesthetized, but that's not true. They just say it because they don't want to deal with dog with squirming around. Right? Uh-huh. So it's, a, it's, it's a tedious shit. You need well, to yeah. Treat. You know, at least two, preferably three people to handle that. Yeah. Okay. And um, what else? Oh. What's the OFA, by the way? Orthopedical Foundation of Animals. Okay. Oto- o- OFA.org or .com, I don't okay. know. It's on Google. Okay. You know, they're the ones who evaluate hips in the United States. Okay. Right. And um, also one more thing I want to say, when you're looking at hips uh, from different countries, OFA has a comparison chart. Mm. So like in Germany, they have normal, fast normal, noch zu gelassen, which normal means normal, uh-huh. which in United States is akin to OFA one and two, three. right? Yeah. Or even three, uh-huh. right? That's noch zu gelassen. And fast normal would fail if you compare it to United States. Noch zu gelassen means still no, I mean, fast normal is the next. Uh-huh. There would be like OFA 3. Uh-huh. And then you have noch zu gelassen. So fast normal means still normal. Uh-huh. Noch zu gelassen means still permissible. That would be the third grade in Europe. Uh-huh. That's German. And, and noch zu gelassen means still permissible. But in the United States, it's already borderline and dysplastic. Okay. So I don't like to see noch zu gelassen on pedigrees. Okay. You period. Know. period. Just yeah. Kind of, Another yeah. thing is when you look at the pedigree, when I look at the pedigree, I look at the dogs there and I, I, I've watched the Nuchze Glassen, right? Uh-huh. And sometimes if there is a, like, like Grisha von dem Schwarzen Milan, that dog was the cause of a lot of bad hips. Great dog and all that, but he produced uh-huh. and still affects uh, bad hips. Okay. And you can see it when you look at the pedigree, I call it pedigree database. Mm-hmm. I call it a red line. You know, you see, you see there is, a, let's say, Grisha, and then there may be nothing, and then there's another one who has Nochtzugelassen, uh-huh. and then another Nochtzugelassen. It's like a line. Uh-huh. 
you know, it comes to your dog all the way five, six, seven, eight generations, uh -huh, wow. right? And if you see that, stay away from it. Okay. You know, okay. you know, and it doesn't have to be Grisha. I'm just using it as an yeah, example. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. many dogs like that. Yeah. But but you look at the Noctugulasums, which are borderline or mild dysplasia in uh -huh. the United States. And that goes back to the LMX, right? You see, you see the uh, suddenly, you know, you know, or the wolf, right? They, yeah. There are the dogs we obviously have, eh, still good, still permissible, right? Mm -hmm. They're still good, according to some humans, by nature, that dog probably wouldn't breed yeah, yeah. or even survive. Yeah, yeah. Right? Okay. Right? So so that's where I go. I, I look at the Noctugalas and I, it goes like a red line. And it may skip a generation or two uh -huh. sometimes or even three. Yeah. But it's, it, you can see just like a line. Yeah. You know, it may go up, down the line, you know? If it's not stopped, it'll be in it for if, if that line is didn't stop at least two three generations ago yeah it's coming your way okay you know and i don't know if i'm forgetting anything probably am you know okay. but these are the main yeah. things you know about hip dysplasia the nutrition the genetics the environmental you know and all that and 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 the deck of cards yeah and uh yeah. hip dysplasia polygenetic problem genetically predisposed but environmentally induced yeah right yeah. remember that the environment just pushes the but potentially bad it. hips over the hump but it didn't cause it didn't cause it yeah, it, just it just pushed, pushed it, it over you know yeah. uh, you cannot just say that the, the it's all environmental you know yeah. there's, there's there's like a field i mean i mean like a two armies one is strictly environmental and one is strictly <laughs> genetics genetic. and they keep fighting on internet mm -hmm. you know and all that yeah and uh, it's both, you know. Yeah, you gotta look at both. There was uh, my father-in-law into like uh, the stars and physics and stuff like that, and he says, "I, I think, I think he was the one that told me the story is that it was a quantum mechanics physics or very complex, yeah, yeah. something very complex, and there's only like like literally like three or four people like scientists that can calculate at that level, like a very small amount. Yeah, of yeah. And there's one particular guy, he's like the Einstein of right. our day, right? And these guys were arguing <clears throat> these points. And the, the top guy said, he goes, both of you or all three of you are correct. Right. It's just, you guys are just looking at it yeah. from a different, right. so it's interesting. Right. Yeah, it's like in, 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 in Bible, the pre-tribulation and post-tribulation, yeah. yeah. right? Yeah, so. You know, they argue, you know, yeah. the, the rapture. Right? Yeah, and <laughs> yeah, so it's. Kind of similar of what you're seeing here. It's, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, you know, have open mind, guys. You know, no matter what you do. Yeah. You know, truth is only one. You're just trying to come to the truth as possible, as close as possible. You will never yeah. probably reach it. Yeah. But try. But the more you know, open-minded you are, yeah, about have open things. mind. Yeah. You know, it's like in dog training. You know. Yeah. Um, I just had this girl telling me, oh, all dog training is equal. You just arrive to the same point from different ways. That's not true, yeah. right? The truth is only one, yeah. right? And you want to come to the result. I like to always look to the nature. I keep saying it. Yeah, right? yep. A friend of mine, you know, he says, he says, you're like Jack London, you know, <laughs> all natural, you know. You know the white fang and all that stuff. You know yeah. how the strongest survive and yeah. you know uh, yeah the call of the wild and yeah. all that. You know, I mean, and it, it's true. I always look at what nature does. That's your that's your baseline. Yeah, yeah. You know, if your if your so called science doesn't coincide with nature, you're on the wrong track. Man. Yeah, with 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 uh, with going off. It's not. I'm not going off subject, but. Like everybody has a computer, so you know these days we do talk about computer, or whatever. But the biggest, all this security stuff, cybersecurity, the number one hole in this whole thing is is the human, is, yeah. is it the one that makes the mistake, which the, you cannot patch that, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And these people know, and like all these high, super smart cybersecurity people know that the human is the ultimate. Right. Yeah, there's can't. always some. Yeah. <laughs> So you cannot really come to the <laughs> yeah. perfection no. unless you're a god, you know. Yeah, yeah. So you know, God is perfect. That's right. Yeah. As far as I know, anyway. Yeah. So yeah. So that's it. Thank you for uh, your knowledge, Hans. Again, uh, 
Uh, I'm just an old dog shit picker. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he says. Uh, we hope you uh, subscribe uh, to to the channel and share 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 yeah. share, share the content uh, and uh, make sure you visit alpinecaninereal.com and that's where all the and the alpinecanine.com for the health yes thing. yeah alpine canine is the original website that Hans yeah, had forever yeah it's getting old and all that so we kind of start slowly yeah. reverting to something yeah, else yeah and we, we but have a, still a lot of good information it's great information actually, actually before I got to know Hans I started actually that's why I was I actually was fascinated all of a sudden I'm reading all this stuff I'm like the, the website looks <laughs> pretty dated but when I started reading what Hans was saying I was like, this guy, is, he knows his stuff, I think. I'm pretty sure, I well, think. And, much and I, I'm giving, uh, most of it, giving it away for free. Yeah. And I made a few videos, hopefully make some money on it, you know. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, I, I, I'm biased, of course, but I think they're yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you, just, you know, the, you get it, the, more, the more you read, the more you can then compare things together, you know, against You know other. what, I'll tell you something, man, philosophically, yeah. okay? Only idiots think they know everything. Mm -hmm, true. You know, the ignorant people, they yeah. think, you know, they think they know it all. Yeah. Right? I know when I was young yeah, yeah. And, and the old people came and says, you guys are so stupid, right? The old dudes. Yeah, right? yeah. And I said, how can you say that? Ah, I'm smart. I know everything. Yeah. It's nothing changed. It's still now. Yeah. So, so, so less you know, more you, you think you are smart and more you know, less you think you know everything yeah so so like socrates you know yeah uh, who was a, historically considered to be one of the smartest people ever he says all i know that i know nothing yeah because he, and, and i'm getting to that point you yeah, know yeah. yeah a little bit of knowledge yeah a lot of knowledge is just nothing really comp that that you know even einstein started having these type of th 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 yeah. thoughts you know about more he knew suddenly he started saying well there is no way God wouldn't be involved in it. You yeah. know? What do I know? You yeah, know? exactly. Just, yeah. You're just describing little. You see, I I look at uh, this as a as a your perspective. The truth is like a sphere, like mm -hmm. a ball, mm -hmm. right? And your point of view is like you you shining the the light flashlight on that sphere. Yeah. And that circle on that sphere is what you know. But there's so much dark around on the side. backside and everywhere. So you need to change the perspective and look at that ball from different perspective and you will know more. Yeah. But you will never ever be able to yeah. <coughs> to see the whole sphere yeah. at the same time. Yeah. It's beyond our capability. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, sir. Thank you.